in addition to doing cellular function, I'm going to teach you about the seven deadly sins of the cell. Now, why do you think that might be important? You already have a question? You know no. <laughs> I, and by the way, you can stop me any time for questions. I have no, you know, it's not like I planned this feature or anything. I just come here and start doing what, you know, works through me. But anyway, um, um, the seven deadly sins of the, sin, sins of the cell and cellular function, because I think it's really, really important for you to understand. Now, I was going to say, why do you think cellular function is important? I'll take anybody's answer. Why is cells important? We are made up of cells. Thank you. I see why you're sitting in the front. This is great. So um, the cellular function, you have 80 trillion approximately cells. They're in a constant process. They're in a process of either growing in a healthy direction. Every cell in your body is growing in either a strong and healthy direction or is diseased and it's going the other way. And so it's your choice to decide whether you're I don't know about shoes this side of the room. This is the healthy side of the room. We're moving in this direction. Or, <laughs> or well, I know why I chose this side of the room. Or moving in a less healthy side of the room. I mean, uh, direction. And everything you do on a daily basis is actually affecting your cells in that way. So let's just take the most basic unit. And I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to have volunteers who are actually going to create a cell so you can see how cells work. But let's say the most basic system of the body is a cell. Now, when that most basic system of the cell um, replicates, it, um, it creates either two healthier cells or two toxic cells. They're not as healthy cells. Do you understand that? So here's a cell. It's lived its life. All right, let's say it's a skin cell. Everybody knows skin cells? Skin cells, they're replicating every 21 days, right? Every 21 days you have brand new skin, a skin. So when that skin cell is sunshine and everything like that, it decides, <laughs> these two up here are also a problem. We won't go into that. All right, so um, when these two, when these cells split, then they create either two healthier cells for your skin, or they become less hydrated, less healthy, less sick, and then your skin goes slowly, little by little, downhill. So that's the most basic concept, the most basic unit of a cell. And you don't realize that, but you are literally replicating trillions of cells on a daily basis. Trillions. And there's a number of things you can do to make those cells healthy. If you're spinning the DNA and all this, that comes from the nutrients that you need on a daily basis. The average person is not creating enough cells. That's number one. And I'll go into how to deal with those. Number two, cells that don't know when to die. So cells that have not picked up, it's called the apoptosis message that says stop replicating. You're no longer a healthy cell. So if we, yeah, so if we take this cell here and it's supposed to replicate, let's say, 40 times. Okay, so it's got a message, it's got built into its DNA a code that says replicate 40 times. If it replicates 41, 42, 43, it's a, like a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, but it's not, it doesn't have the proper telomerase or somatic cells or anything like that. It's not good anymore. And so that cell is what we would call a mutation. Almost every form of cancer is a mutated cell, a cell that has not it's a stubborn, hard-headed cell. You could say a woman's cell, but that would be a problem. <laughs> Never mind, I won't do that. <laughs> it's a hard-headed cell that won't quit. And because of that, uh-oh, I did tell some people to bring fruit, so. Anyway, um, because of that, it literally does not die when it's supposed to. That's a big, big problem. Think of this. Think of every cell in your body never knew when to die. You know how big you'd be? You know how gnarly and smelly and sticky you'd be like this? He's just dragging around all kind of dead, ugly cells, zombie like, right? They got for death. I mean, it's the circle. It's, you, there are cells that have lived long enough. They need to complete. If your cells never die like they're supposed to, I mean, seriously, think of how you look. <laughs> that's not a pretty thought, right? How do, oh, very good. I will go into that because that's a message issue. But the, anyway, first one, not enough cells. Number two, cells that won't die. Number three. Extra or outside the cell, remember that nice circle that we had? Outside the cell, toxicities. Toxicities in the extracellular fluids. And those can be, and by the way, the number one cause for extracellular toxicity, the number one cause for extracellular toxicity is dehydration or not drinking enough water. You are about 70% water. If you're not drinking, if you're not drinking, your bat, let's say at least half your body weight in ounces in water a day, your body's trying to clean itself with old water. It would be like if you took a bath in a bathtub on Monday and said, you know what, that water's pretty 
15, I'll take a bath here tomorrow night. And, then, and by the end of the week, that is nasty bath water. Yeah, right? Well, look at he's drinking. Jonathan, way to go. Healthy cell. Okay, so you don't want to take a bath in dirty bath water. Your cells don't want to have dirty extracellular fluids. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, good. So drinking water flushes out. But there's a number of other, the other types of toxins, most particularly, one of the most worst toxins extracellular in the body is bacteria. And bacteria is running rampant. We have had extensively, especially in the United States, the overuse, extensive overuse of antibiotics, and it's caused bacteria to grow very, very fast and actually caused more of a bacterial problem in the world. When we go into extracellular toxicity and bacteria, I'll be glad to go into some things that we can do as to how to stop those things. Okay? So extracellular toxicity is number three. Number four is intercellular toxicity. That's, uh, that's toxicity. Remember the cell group? Remember we got the protein in? What if, what if bad guys got inside the cell? That's really a problem, right? Because that causes even the DNA, mitochondria, and RNA to not work at all like they're supposed to. That is a big, that's the worst of the worst kind of problems. And virtually anybody who's got any form of cancer, who's got anything that's a strong, uh, highly degenerative disease, it's because the toxins have now went from just outside the wall to inside the cell wall, and they're causing problem degeneration in the DNA, mitochondria, and all the inter intercellular functions. That's by far the worst. And this is where we get to some of the environmental toxins, such things as mercury, and such things as pesticides and chemicals and things like that. They seem to be able to find a way inside the cell. We're, uh, um, so, extracellular, intracellular toxicity, that's three and four. Five is cells, when two cells don't communicate to each other. And that's because they stick together. Okay. Yeah. That's when two cells, instead of having a natural, like normal adherence to each other, where that cell wall is strong and they bounce back and forth, they have elevated levels of glucose or glycogen that go around them, it's almost like, think about two donuts, two Dunkin' Donuts or whatever name donuts, think about those sticking. Because every time you eat glucose, you're adding to that gumming factor. Now when cells stick together, when they don't, they don't the, there's a thing called the GM, CM, the communication cells, you know, that, that, uh, that, that tell cells exactly what to do, then those cells become very, very deficient because the cell walls are, are glommed, up, glommed onto each other and you're not getting even the, the normal messages. This is by far the number one killer in the United States. By far is the high use of glucose in our diet. And I'm not talking about just white sugar, but we can talk about white sugar. I think I mentioned earlier on this day that in the year 1920, the average person had a chance of having a heart attack was one in 200. Your, your chance of having cancer at that time was one in 200 or so. <coughs> that in the year 1920. In the year 2010, you're one out of three. Count around you, one out of three potential cancer, one out of three potential for heart attacks. Now, by the way, they look in the wrong area on that. They say, okay, cholesterol, et cetera, et cetera. That, but that is not it. It's the high use of glucose. We went from eating five pounds of sugar in the year 1920 to over 200 pounds of sugar per person in the United States in the year 2010. A few nights ago, we celebrated an incredible thing called Halloween. Did you know on one night, on one night, more money is spent on sugar than it is spent on children's vitamins the whole year. You do know that, right? Right. Total, total, total the whole thing. I, I don't, I've heard that number, I've heard other. More money was spent in one night for sugar than is spent on children's vitamins across, add all the children's vitamins makers together. They don't even come close to the amount of money spent for candy for Halloween. And it just goes on and on. When I used to be really active in practice, I used to see the kids would come in from around this time, first of November, and John Therese says, and they said that they have ear aches and ear infections and running nose and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, wow, this is interesting. Oh, it's cold and flu season. It's not cold and flu season. It's Halloween. You mixed them up so badly with sugar. It's, um, you know, it's unbelievable. I think I've told it before. I've raised a lot of children. I don't know exactly how many I have. There's quite a few. Like, there are a lot of them. <laughs> it's somewhere between six and eight, I think, I have with children. 
So, but, but I, I, my children, I, I birthed them all myself, I raised them all, I, they've never had an antibiotic, they've never had vaccination, never had, but they also, you know, didn't have sugar. Now that they're old enough to forage for themselves, they do find sugar. But when they were little, when they were in the formative years, we didn't do sugar. So, anyway, the, the idea of cells sticking together and the glucose in the cells, which would take me a lot more time to go into, all the, all the negatives of it, is the number one cause of illness in the United States. Because these cells have to speak, have to communicate to each other. It's like if two people saying to each other would never talk, and that link of information that we were talking about, that doesn't happen, then there's no way you can have a happy body, healthy body. And this literally messes up the receptor sites we wrote, it just gums up the whole process. And it's extremely, extremely hard on the body. That there is a glucose molecule that our body was well designed to uptake. And that would be things that are naturally occurring in fruits and vegetables. And then there's when they mess with the molecule and they do such things as, again, white pizza, white flowers, white, anything where... Process. Process, thank you. Process. Anytime that man says we have a better idea than God, they don't. I can tell you for sure. The other ones are artificial sweeteners because every time they try to produce an artificial sweetener it says you need all that you want and there's no calories. That ain't good either because that really causes trouble in your body. Those are incredibly carcinogenic. Whatever you do, if you don't eat anything else, never, 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 never let a friend drink a diet, anything. Diet soda, diet diet. Those are deadly, 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 deadly. Evil. Did you have a question? Yes, good question. Uh, how do you like honey as a sweetener? Oh, honey's much, I'm a bear. No, honey is much bigger than maple syrup. All the things that were a part of our indigenous heritage and that are part of our, that we've eaten for thousands and thousands of years actually seems to work better. But even honey, I think you have to watch as far as maturation. The two other things that I want to cover, now, the mitochondria, dysfunction of the mitochondria, and now we're actually having a whole classification of mitochondrial diseases, is because the mitochondria is not getting the nutrients that it needs. Okay, so a degeneration of the mitochondria is the number six deadly sin of the cell. And number seven is the most complicated, of which I'm not going to spend much time with, but it's called mutations in the DNA. And those are genetic mutations. 